up, brothers and sisters of the order. Welcome back to the order. I'm Celtic Templar, and today, y'all, we are getting into our last video on the Gallo Glass. Now, many of y'all would probably be confused by this if y'all saw our last video on the Gallo Glass, being that on the 16th century Gallo Glass. Well, many of y'all don't realize on the history books and such, but yeah, that video was to cover the Gallo Glass nobleman from the 15th to the 16th century, and as well also the Gallo Glass of the 16th century. So what am I covering? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm actually covering that of the Gallo Glass levy of the 16th century. And we actually see their equipment changed a lot. You will see me use various styles of weapons, such as one, the great sword, two, our sparth axe, three, sword, buckler, targe, and throwing spears. Now I wanted to put in a uh, big spear for this one because there are accounts that do state they did use them, but there are also accounts that state they did not use them. So it varies from user to user. There are also accounts that even state that they even used archers in order to fight on the battlefield. But this is rare. And in fact, there are also some accounts that state that the Galaglass used matchlock firearms, but there are also accounts that stated that they despise the weapon. So I don't know which one is true or not. So I have to take various accounts into order. So what was the levy by the time of the 16th century in the Galaglass ranks? Well, as you can tell, their equipment escalated financially because one, the Gallo Glass were being hired by many Irish nobles in order to fight against the English, especially that of Queen Elizabeth herself, who dismantled the Gallo Glass sometime by the, before her death. And as well, King James even stated to make them outlaws of the realm if they so much as dare, well, fight back against the English rule. Now, many of the Gallo Glass levy at this point in time were of that of, well, the commoners of the region of Ireland, and many times over, many of the Irish actually used uh, different variations of weapons. In fact, many times over, there are many accounts that Irish kerns uh, made up of the Gallo Glass ranking units. Now, Gallo Glass, in this point in time, by the levy units, had different types of equipment. It depended pretty much on their wealth and status. However, if none of y'all know, uh, the uh, Irish um, kerns were somewhat of the regular style warriors. They could afford a sword and shield-like weapon, as well as uh, a form of buckskin armor. But that depended on if they wanted to or not. Now, what I'm also wearing is a liet, or locked, which is a form of Irish wear, that of which was quite commonly seen in Celtic regions such as Ireland and Scotland. Now the one I'm wearing is short, it's like about yay high. Now some historian, now I'm already going to hear a lot of y'all saying, Oh Templar, you should wear a longer one that's down to your knees. Well, that's the thing. It depended pretty much on, well, the way you wanted it. And the fact is, this was actually the most common of clothing in, Iron, in Ireland, and the fact is, this would have been of very high fashion. In fact, here's the thing, this is such a high fashion type of way of showing off to say, hey, I'm in the fashion sense, look, we're copying and such. <laughs> um, this would be used throughout Ireland pretty much from around all the way to the end of the 16th century. And the reason being is because, one, the Irish were told to become more English-like. In other words, to get rid of their culture. In fact, even Anglo-Irish, the nobles who adopted this design of culture and such of their, well, uh, holdings in Ireland, they were told to get rid, be more English, or give up their title. You can see what they did there. So, yeah. Now, many of y'all would automatically start to ask, Well, Templar, why do you wear such a small, short one when uh, you can obviously see in many pictures and historical manuscripts that show them being longer? Well, that's the thing, though. There are also other pictures and images that actually show them about yay big, about down to here. In fact, there is this image right here of this guy right here, as we see, 
uh, he actually is wearing nothing more than that of a said, well, two type of tunics. We see him wearing an inner tunic like this, and we see him wearing an outer tunic like this. So the fact is, it would have depended pretty much on what they preferred on the length. So uh, this person would have preferred that length, this person would have preferred that length. So it depended pretty much on the user. So, yeah. Now, Gallo Glass Levy, by this point in time period, were expert fighters on the battlefield. There are many accounts that state while fighting in the ranks and forces of the thick of battle, it's actually stated that Irishmen, uh, Irish nobles and such, would have hired them in such a manner that they could afford, now a levy could afford mail. Now, there are accounts that state that they would have first gone with something that protected their neck, rather than go down to here first, because one, they could have used a Scottish targe. In fact, the majority of the uh, the majority of the said Gallo Glass Levy were of that of the said uh, Irish Kerns. And in doing so, their weapon and equipment were mostly of that of Irish Kern weapons, such as that of the Targ Shield and a sword. Now, there are also accounts that say that they mostly would have preferred using javelins rather than go to the Great Axe, but honestly, as soon as they go to it, you can see how devastating this would have been on the battlefield. There are accounts also that state they even used a targ strapped on shield with their spark. So you'll see me do that very soon in the video. Uh, but as well, another type of helmet that changed, or armor that changed, would have been this, the helmet. The Morion helmet would have switched out with the different variations of skull cap helms, mainly used by the said Irish. Now, they would have first probably used a skull cap with a leather cover, but then they probably switch to something more like this. And then also you'll soon see me uh, use a said uh, Borgia. Now, a Burgivet, whatever you pronounce it as. The, these English helmets would have been the most common, but not exactly the cheapest, as these were. Which, the reason being this was cheaper was because one, this was technically like that of a kettle helmet. You and I can see why the Irish would have, uh, the said Galagos Levy would have preferred wearing this over the Burbot. It would have been cheaper, and you would have also had the same amount of protection. In fact, I could just protect my neck by doing this, or by doing this, and it could just deflect to the side. So we can see why they would have preferred this. So, enough talking. How about we get right into this, shall we?
rundown and all that. Now, as you all saw, uh, I actually didn't feel that much fatigue. Uh, I was moving pretty good for a bit, and the only problem I had was, one, the Irish clothing kind of got tangled with some of the equipment, so that's probably the only downside I had. Other than that, I didn't have much problems, except for other with the uh, Targ shield and the Danax, and I can see why this probably wouldn't have been a good idea, because one, if you had it strapped on, then you have to do, <laughs> I can see you doing an overhead and a side swipe from the right side, or wherever, if you're, because uh, since I'm right-handed, my shield's going to be on my left side. So in doing so, I had to do mostly right side swings. So if I did a left side, it's not going to end well. Uh, so I can see why. So I would have probably seen them probably uh, use, say, a strap or whatever when they had it, uh, when they weren't using the charge. Other than that, I would still see them probably using various styles of use of using the said two-handed style axe. Now, as, I, as most of y'all saw, I moved incredibly quickly, and that's because, one, I'm not wearing a gamison, I'm wearing a felt jacket underneath. Now, felt jackets, or in this case, woolen jackets, were uh, probably the most major thing they wore underneath this. Now, this is if you, because I can actually uh, see how this actually was worn mostly by the uh, lower class levy units, because, one, they probably couldn't have that, that much account of using gambeson. And since they were mostly of Irish kerns, we could see that they would have preferred to wear light equipment underneath the mail. So in other words, no gambeson, but that of felt jackets of wool. And th there are many accounts that actually state that felt jackets were uh, protective enough to stop cutting weapons like swords. However, the blunt impact of, say, like an axe, for example, we could see why many gallo glass uh, levy units preferred to wear mail underneath this, but we can see pretty much a different variations, but still Now I hear many people already asking, but Tibor, you look like a gallo glass. Well, that's the thing. Most of the time I was. But gallo glass levies were such a rare occasion at this point in time, and most of the time they got confused for actual gallo glass. So many of you all would ask, okay, well, what's the difference between a gallo glass levy and a gallo glass during this point in time. One, they have not been, I don't know how I could put this into words, but the most modern English tongue I can use for this would be knighted. Now, it's not the, the count that they were knighted, it's, it, it, I wouldn't say knighted, it's, but the gallo glass didn't have a word for what it's called, so the best way I can put, use for it is not being knighted into the folds of the gallo glass. In other words, you pretty much have to go through an oath. But the problem is, so many Irish kerns uh, got into the ranks of the gallo glass so quickly by the time of the 16th century, there are some accounts that actually state that there were many gallo glass units that were, or supposed gallo glass that were gambeson that were actually Irish kerns. So we don't have much information on it. But still, what do y'all think? The Galagos Levy not get it that much attention because I certainly feel like they don't because one, I would have loved to use a elongated spear out here or a uh, arrow, a bow and arrow, but the problem is, one, to the major fact, we don't have much evidence to prove whether or not if they did or if they didn't wear something like this. So until we can, I am going to have to pretty much, uh, well, mostly do it in the in our changing room so that way you can see on what they could have actually looked like if they did use it or not. So yeah, uh, but still, what do y'all accounts think about these weapons that they used? Honestly, to my best, opinion, to my best approval, I think the Sparth Axe mixed in with this equipment would have been such light and effective combat effective, it would have been perfect for the battlefield. Now. This is coming to the fact that, one, we will hopefully get into the Irish kingdoms, hopefully soon. Uh, but, yeah. But what I'm going to end up doing is go from pretty much the very beginning of said cultures, such as, like, say, Ireland. I'm going to have to start from the said, our best accounts and approaches from history from the, about them to pretty much the uh, 
first century B AD, so that way we can get a better estimation on information before we can later go to other centuries. So in other words, we're going to go pretty much from early cultures, such as like say a Bronze Age culture, like say Rome for example, we're going to pretty much redo our Roman series from the Roman kingdoms all the way, like from the Roman kingdom of Rome to the fall of Constantinople. That means we're also going to go back to our Varangians, and we're going to do a different variation of Varangian. But as well, y'all, we will be doing a how-to voting very soon after our, uh, after our, uh, uh redoing history video, and apparently y'all chose, uh, what if the Western Roman Empire never fell. So, we're going to see on what goes there. Now, I want to put this out here, y'all. I was wanting to also do a video, a reaction video to Thang Thran's newest video on the Kopesh. The sad part of it is apparently YouTube wouldn't allow me for some weird reason. I don't know why. I'm still trying to understand that. So, hopefully I can get it out by next weekend before we can get to the redoing video. But that also brings me up to my next topic. Thang Thrand is already in the process of losing his house. He's being evicted from his home, y'all. He needs our help as best as we can. I am sending him as many uh, type of homes that he can afford so him and his family are not out on the streets and such because one, y'all, we can't allow that to happen at Thang Thrand. Because one, help him out as best as y'all can. I will leave links down below on where y'all can help him out in the description area. So go and help him out on Spotify and such. That way, we can help him out as best as we can, y'all. Anyways, guys, like and subscribe for more. If y'all have a warrior in history y'all want me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. We will be getting right into that, hopefully very soon. Now, because I can already hear many of y'all saying, you should do the Irish current of the late century. Well, we'll get to them soon. But hopefully soon we will get to I later Ireland in history. But all in all, y'all, Hope to see y'all in the next one. Have a great day, y'all. Mm -hmm.